Hey everyone, and welcome to a, another review for BritXbox.co.uk. Uh, talking to you today is Ben Hall, and I'm going to be talking about Mad Max, as you can see on your screen right now. So, obviously head over to BritXbox.co.uk for the full review, and it's a long one, so there's a lot to talk about in here. But I want to talk about Mad Max and how this is a really cool game. A really fun, exciting, action-packed experience that's possibly been released at the worst time of year. If this game had come out three months earlier, right in the middle of the summer or the early part of the summer, it would have had loads of attention, loads of people talking about it, playing it, getting excited. Around the time the movie Fury Road had come out, things like that, it would have been huge. But instead it's been released at the same time as the Blu-ray in the US, but not in the UK or Europe. And it's come out on the same day as Metal Gear Solid V, one of the most hyped and critically acclaimed games of this generation so far. And it's a real shame that it's come up against that, because I think this game is probably going to be forgotten, ignored, and just seen as an also-ran, whereas I've had a lot of fun playing this title. The premise is a simple one. So you're Mad Max, the eponymous hero that you know from the films uh, created by George Miller and obviously popularised this year by Fury Road. Um, and Max is a tortured individual. And in this game, right at the start, you lose your black on black, your famous interceptor. So due to that, you meet this character, Chum Bucket, who becomes your sidekick and helps you build up a new car to conquer the wasteland and hopefully escape the insanity that surrounds your life and your existence. That's kind of it. Throughout the game you meet a lot of like a, a really diverse, fun and exciting cast of characters, though the story doesn't really take off until the last half or the last third of the game. But the premise is fun, fun enough and you know it moves you along and uh, gives you plenty of reason to explore the wasteland as much as possible. What I found with Mad Max, uh, after of course I reviewed Shadow of Mordor and Arkham Knight this year, is that Warner Brother have become the sort of premier publisher for the open world experience. I think even putting Ubisoft to shame now. And it's really good to see. The formula they have, they've hit upon here, with the, the construction of the open world, with the exciting environments that they've designed, uh, with the vast amount of choices, it really works for them. Um, while you don't see it in the videos here that I'm playing, sadly, because they're a relatively rare occur uh, occasion, the sandstorms that also strike in Mad Max make this open world that bit more exciting and actually that bit more sort of unpredictable, which is important considering, you know, you're doing a lot of sort of side activities and um, running around and busy work collecting scrap, which is the sort of things you'd expect from open world games, though it does feel slightly incongruous in a Mad Max setting considering, you know, you're meant to be playing in a wasteland, devoid of life, devoid of hope, devoid of things, and yet there is a lot to do inside Mad Max. Systems upon systems upon systems of things to do. Multiple ways of upgrading Mad Max. Multiple ways of upgrading the car. Multiple reasons of reputation and, and things like threat levels. And It can be a little bit confusing and bewildering at times because there is just so much to do. Um, you know, but you, uh, you wouldn't want to play an open world game without the things to do in it because uh, you get bored which makes me lament the fact that Mad Max isn't a slightly more focused experience you know character driven um, focusing on his ennui and his sadness his loss of his his family his desperation his desire for um, revenge but also redemption you know but these things are touched upon but it's stretched out over a much larger experience, say, than a focused experience like, you know, Uncharted series or something like that. As you can see in some of the videos, I spend a lot of time just looking for scrap. Every area you go in, you need scrap. Scrap's your currency. It's part of the systems that I was talking about earlier. Without scrap, you can't do anything. So you're constantly hunting for it to upgrade and make Mad Max, Max more of a badass. You'll see in some of the videos, which I've cut together over various um, parts of my playthrough, Max looks a bit different. He starts off very low level of armor, not so combat proficient, but soon becomes a badass. Here I am picking up a history relic, another form of collectible within the game. These things um, add a little bit of flavor and color to the world before the wasteland, which I think is a really nice touch. And again, feels very true to Mad Max because while Mad Max is a game set in George Miller's universe it's not an adaptation of any of the specific films it's more like inspired by much like Warner Brothers have done with the uh, Batman franchise and with the um, Lord of the Rings franchises and licenses they've been able to sort of take their own directions uh, with these very talented studios um, and you know create something new and I really like that idea 
Now, I've moaned about systems, but one of the things I absolutely love in Mad Max are the two most important things. And the things that elevate this game and pull it out of what could be sort of a, an open world mediocrity. It's the combat and the driving. I love the feel of the combat in this game. While it's instantly familiar to those that have played Arkham Knight, say this year, you know, the counter and strike system, it feels weighty, it feels brutal. And unlike Batman, you have no problem with brutally murdering your foes, and you will do this a lot. Often in combat, when you get enough of a chain of a multiplier going, you'll enter fury mode, which is so much fun. It makes you even more badass, it makes your impacts do even more damage. The combat is brutal, you have things like pinning enemies against walls and just smashing in their face, uh, picking up melee weapons. You'll see some combat in a minute, actually, in this video here, where I nearly die. Um, but I hold on and I, I use the open world nature of the game, the emergent gameplay elements, to pull out a save and a win in the end. Um, but I absolutely love the feeling of combat. The driving takes a little bit of getting used to. The camera has some definite issues with staying, like keeping things and the action in focus when you want to move around. But it's something you get used to pretty quickly. Um, and I still had a lot of fun with it. Upgrading the Magnum Opus, using the Harpoon, my easily my most favorite weapon. Pulling enemies out of their vehicles, ripping doors off, all kinds of things like that. Um, you know, just driving around the wasteland is a lot of fun. You always want to explore, see what's hidden around the next bend or in the next hole in the ground. And, and the visuals never fail to delight. Uh, it's a gorgeous looking game, surprising considering the setting. I absolutely adored the skyboxes. It's one of some of the most stunning visuals, and that coupled with sort of unpredictable sandstorms make the, ge the game visually arresting almost the entire time you're playing it. I absolutely loved it. I, I mean, it's so good they've included like a photo and video mode in the game, so you can actually take your own screenshot and tweet them and stuff because they know how good, damn good, good looking this game is, and I agree. Um, so I really enjoyed the elements of that. So in, on top of things like competent combat with a great weighty feel to it, as you can see here, fun driving, customization, all of these elements come together to make a really fun experience and one I feel that you should play. It's a gorgeous experience and I understand you're probably playing Metal Gear. You're probably still playing Metal Gear. You'll be playing Metal Gear for a long time but Mad Max deserves your attention too. It's exciting, it's fun, you feel like a badass. I highly recommend it. Head over to BritXbox.co.uk for the full review.